this is example number six of section 16.6. We are still talking about a instantaneous center of rotation and rolling without slipping. So here we have a disc that is rolling out of a cord. So you can imagine that the cord is surrounding the disc and it's rolling down. So the instantaneous center of rotation of this disc will be this one. So it's rolling respect to this point, rolling out respect to that point. And we are asked to find the velocity and deceleration of point B. So the solution, the velocity is very easy because we have a velocity is always perpendicular between the distance of the instantaneous center rotation to the point, and it will be equals to the distance between B and the instantaneous center of rotation times omega. And those are both given because we are given that the radius of this uh, disk is 100 millimeters, so it's 0 0.2, so it will be 0 0.2 meters times 3 radians per second, so it will give me that the velocity of B is equal to 0 0.6 meters per second. To find the acceleration of the point B, we can do, do it in different ways. I have done other problems where I set the coordinate system instantaneous center of rotation. We can actually set it out also in point C. So if we want to calculate the acceleration, Let's use a fixed coordinate system to the disk, but using one point, maybe not in the instantaneous center of rotation, but in point C, to see how it goes. As I said, I, I invite you to do the same problem by using instantaneous center of rotation, but I just wanted to do you a different approach. In this case, if we want to calculate the acceleration, Using point C, we have the, our formula, which is this is the angular acceleration, the distance between B and C, and minus omega square. This is for, for, for the disk, right? And this is also for the disk. And the distance between C and B. So in this case, you see we need the acceleration of C. And as you recall, the acceleration of C is equals to using the concept of instantaneous center of rotation is alpha cross the distance between C and the instantaneous center of rotation. This is equals to 8 in K times the distance which is 0 0.1 in negative I. So we know that the acceleration is the velocity of B and the acceleration, let me write it in blue, so it will be 0 0.1 times alpha, right? So it will be 0 0.1 times alpha. Acceleration for, for C, it will be 0 0.8 in negative k, j, right? Meters over second square. And then the acceleration of B, will be equals to negative 0 0.8. Here we have also a 8 in K, and here is 0 0.1 in negative I. And then we have, we have to remember that this point will have a normal acceleration and a, a tangential acceleration. So this will be the tangential acceleration and the normal acceleration. So this will be uh, 3 squared times 0 0.1, and the distance will be in negative i. So finally we have the acceleration of b will be equals to negative 0 0.8 in j plus k times i, you always remember, k times i is j, with this negative i, give me a negative value in j, 0 0.8, okay. And here we have 0 0.9 in i. Negative times negative give me 
a positive i. So finally, the acceleration of p will be equal to 0 0.9 in i, negative 1.6 in j. And that all that is meters over second square. So this is a vector quantity. If we draw this vector quantity, we'll have a normal uh, acceleration and a tangential acceleration. If we want to, to calculate a total acceleration, a magnitude of the acceleration of B, we have to say that the magnitude of the acceleration will be equals to 0 0.9 square plus 1.6 square. That gives me a value of 1.84 meters over second square. And if I want to calculate the angle, will be tangent, the inverse function of tangent, 1.6 over 0 0.9. And the angle is equals to 60.64 degrees. So we were able to find the, so the velocity of point B and the acceleration of point B. Remember that since this is rotating, this is, has a curvilinear motion and it has two components.